before him. Um, you, tonight's agenda is in your binders. Um, the first item on the agenda is to call the order. Next is to approve the agenda, which I assume uh, the agenda is acceptable to everybody. Next item on the agenda is to elect a chair for the uh, Board of Abatement. And so the floor is open for nominations. I nominate you. <laughs> Second. Second. <laughs> are, are there any other nominations? All right. We can declare that I, uh, I, I accept the uh, election as chair. Next item is to adopt the rules of the Board of Abatement, which was, uh, there were also, sorry? Oh. He went by unanimous. By, yeah, no. by, yeah, by occupation, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. There's, there's no other, no other candidates. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, next, the, the, the rules of procedure were also provided to everybody, and uh, so I would ask for a motion to uh, approve the rules uh, of procedure for the Board of Abatement. That's what it says. That's, That's all it says. says. <laughs> so there's no guidance. Correct. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yep. So I will move uh, that we uh, adopt the rules of procedure. Is there a second? <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we have three abatement hearings scheduled for tonight. And uh, I was discussing this at our council meeting uh, last night, and I realized that the clerk and I had a, diff had a different understanding of what we decided to do a couple of weeks ago at a Board of Civil Authority meeting. But, uh, but what my understanding of what we had agreed to was that for any of the assessment, uh, any of the requests that are based on flood damage that we would take the evidence at the night of the hearing and then hold all of those until the very end and then go through all of them and uh, make our in, in deliberative session at the end. That way we can make sure we're consistently applying the standards and treating people fairly and so so I'll, I'll repeat this speech probably at every meeting to let people who come know that they're not going to be leaving with a decision tonight. However, someone whose decision, whose request is not based on flood damage, we can discuss and make those decisions at the at the meeting. And the first meeting, the first appellant is Susan Abdo. Would you raise your right hand, please? You solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury, if the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Great. Thank you. All right. And this is uh, parcel number 019-032000. And, uh, and we have your uh, request for an abatement. So why don't you just tell us what uh, what's going on okay well <clears throat> I I check the third box down in terms of requesting the abatement so I am a person that is unable to pay and I've I've paid my I'm caught in a cycle I don't have that much income but because the assessment came and it doesn't account for my my homestead because my homestead was already submitted before the assessment so I need an abatement for one I think one year I don't know if it's one year I don't know how how it all flows but I need an abatement until I do my homestead for this year so when you uh, when you fill out your do your taxes in April, 
you'll submit the homestead. And, and you were able to make it with the uh, income sensitivity that you had up until that point. I am. Uh, okay. I hope. That's what you told me. <laughs> I don't. Sure. So, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of in the dark here. Uh -huh. Does anyone have any questions? Tim. Just quickly, just in the packet we got, we have your last year's tax bill and this year's tax bill, and it appears that you're getting the homestead education payment on the tax bill. I can, uh, the, the difference in the two tax bills is uh, $1,194 in increase right. because of the value, the value change. But she is getting the homestead. Correct. Well, I, yes. I, I got the homestead before it's the based on new the assessment. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. thanks. And so if you'll, you'll, you'll look, that's, that's a good point because I did submit my taxes for both years. And my taxes basically, well, they sort of doubled. Like 323 was my, and 64 cents was my old tax. And my new, my, my new taxes are 622. 21, so it's not quite doubled. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob, you had a question? Yeah, I was looking for the, I, I see the sheet for the 22-23 tax. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, the, talking about the other one is sort of, at the keep going, that they just didn't, they weren't applied okay. correctly. I see this one, okay. Carrie. So just so I can clarify what's going on here, you have file your taxes in April with the state, and the state looks at how much your homestead is worth as of April 15th or whatever when you file your taxes. And then the state says, okay, we're going to give you a certain amount of credit on your property taxes based on the value of your home and what we think your taxes are going to be in April. And on your income. Uh, based on your income, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, after that, the tax bills come out. And the tax bills this year also came out after a reassessment. So the tax bill was higher than the state thought it was going to be. So this is a problem of the state not calculating things in an appropriate way. I think it's an issue in a reappraisal year because they don't know what the values are going to be until um, August. So we're, it, it doesn't make sense to me that the city, I mean, I think that it makes sense that the, the property owner should get the appropriate amount of, um, of help from the state. But it doesn't make sense to me that the city should be making up that difference because the state doesn't calculate it in an accurate way. Is there, do we have any way to well, respond to that? I, 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 I can, I called the state mm -hmm. because <clears throat> I appealed my amount that I was reappraised at. And um, that's when I called the state and I was told I have to work with the city, not the state. So I worked with Marty. <laughs> I did. I did my best. I mean, yeah. So the question is really. I mean, I'll get. To, to you, but I think the question is really. Should the state have some method for a person to file an amended homestead declaration or something once yeah. once there's a reappraisal? Because this has to happen like in every town where there's yeah. a, a reappraisal, right? Yeah. Correct. But. The state's payment is based on the new assessment at 2022 income. So the assessment here, the state payment of $4,679, is based on the, the income that you filed and the new assessment. It's not based on the old assessment. So Can the you, state, where are you seeing that, Bob? Right. Well, if you look right here, the state payment is $4,679. That's based on the income she filed this year. The state makes the calculation based on what the current tax is, not last year's tax, but based on the current tax. Hmm. And that's why you don't know what it is until the tax bill comes out. And you look at the year before, 
whether taxes are lower the state had a lower payment. The state payment in that year, for last year's taxes, I think was uh, get back to the first sheet. 47, no, yeah. yeah, so there's a letter dated June 30th from the state saying this is the credit we've calculated, and it says house site value 200700 which is the old value. Yeah. That's so I think that their credit of 4679 was based on the old value of the house. Hmm. That's what the state told me. But that well, is the weird. state won't have a final grant list until August, um, so that they wouldn't be able to give an actual uh, house value until then. Yeah, that, that's very weird. Yeah, because the house site value on the new tax bill is the 340. And but the, city, the tax bill is the city. Yeah, yeah. Right. the city knows what's what. Yeah. The state does. Yeah. It's because the state doesn't know yet. So what do we do about that tonight? I think if we had that situation, we'd have it for every single person in Montpelier that's getting a home tax exemption. We'd be in the same boat. Well, but not everybody's got an ability to pay issue. Right? Yeah, but there is but there's definitely an equity issue. issue. Oh, the they, states? Yeah. yeah, it's messed up. <laughs> I mean, they measure their ability to pay issue. Well, I think what we do tonight is we address this property owner's issue yeah. and maybe talk to the tax department about implementing some way to, to amend. Well, this, I'm sure this isn't the first time that this has happened with the state, so I can call them tomorrow and find yeah. out how they've been handling it. Is there a procedure to file a supplemental um, request to the state? That's what we're talking about, you, whether you, there is or not. I don't know if there's one. Yeah. I, I don't think the state has a supplemental procedure once you receive your adjustment. It's based on your income, and they, that's, that's how they determine it. I think that's right. Yeah, Carrie. Yeah, I think the appellant has told us that she tried to do that with the state, right? And they said, no, there's no way to address that. So you, 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 you talked to the tax department, and, and you said, this is a change now. I can't afford it now because the assessment's gone up, and they well, said there are other the there are other reasons too that I can't afford it. But <clears throat> um, I'm eighty two dollars, eighty two dollars over my budget for crisis fuel, and because we had a citywide flood, Barry had a flood too. Capstone. Is, and, the, and they had to take the money that, uh oh, I think that's my phone. No, it's some oh, yes, no. Um, They had to take the money to give to the flood pe victims. Hmm. So they couldn't give the money to me. So I've gotten crisis fuel for, one crisis fuel for like over about, about 10 years. And this year, I'm eighty-two dollars over. Can you imagine? It's no. I, I'm I'm just so struggling. Now I've tried to pay. I've I I paid my um. I paid more than what I paid last year. I paid three hundred and forty dollars, and I've paid my water bill, even though. Oh my goodness! I'm just going to sound like. Just excuse what this sounds like, but I came, I haven't had a hot water heater since July, but I'm not a flood victim, okay? My hot water heater has been on the brink for a whole year, but anyway. Got it. If it was before July that I knew that I needed a hot water heater, but I was sort of hobbling with hot water. And then after the flood, my right after in July, I'm, I'm not sure what the date is. I don't know if I've, I've said it on this thing. But anyway, um, I had a flood in my basement because the water just, so uh, when I went down to, I went down to my basement and um, I just heard, 
I saw the water and the flood in the basement, and I heard the water going, and I turned off the main water valve. And, and that stopped it. I don't know where the water went from the basement, but when, my, when one of my adult sons came over, the water was leaving the basement. So I just said, okay, we're just going to let, let things, <laughs> you know? I mean, what can I do? So when I, got, when I went upstairs, I realized by turning off the main water valve, I have no water. So I turned off the circuit breaker to the hot water heater, and I did my best with turning off the, the valves to the hot water heater. They were already turned off, but... I don't know. So anyway, I went and I went and I ran ran some water upstairs and I went down to my basement and I I saw I, I didn't hear any water. So anyway, um so my water bill was pretty high for me. It was higher than it normally is, and but I paid it. So I'm 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 really I've lived in my house for 36 years. I'm ne I I might have been late one time on my taxes, but I'm very conscientious about it. I'm not like um, <laughs> what do you call that? You know, fly by night kind of person. Well, you know. You shouldn't feel bad about requesting this. The statutes provide for this relief for people who can't afford their taxes. Well, this is taxes. the first time I've so. ever had to come before the Board of Abatement. And it is, it is, it is a little bit nerve-wracking for mm -hmm. me because all my information is out there. Sure. So, um, Folks, do we have any other questions? Or is there a motion? Um, Kim. Tell me what your request is exactly in dollars? Well, I'm requesting the taxes above 340. I don't really know what I'm requesting. Um, it seems like what you were saying was that you have the ability to pay the 323.64. Well, I paid 340. Quarter. By really just being very, very, very careful, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm paying the 340, and so I paid my last water bill in December, and that was high. My water bill will be low. Um, you know, this next water bill will be really low because I haven't had any. I haven't used any water. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've used cold water, but no hot water. I'm reading your request. Is it? $298.57. Well, and, and then, then I was told there were fees by Bev Hill. That, that there, there, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. So and, I really don't fee, know. The fees are automatically abated if the taxes are abated. Oh. So, okay. so good to point that out, but yeah. So two fifty eight two ninety eight fifty seven per quarter is your request, as I understand. Per quarter. Yeah. I'll move it. Just to have a discussion. Yeah, why don't you second it and then Okay. So, okay. Now go ahead, Bob. Yeah, looking at both sheets again, getting my head straight on it. In the current tax bill, the tax rate is the education tax rate is lower the rate than the previous year. And that's because of the appraisal. The appraisal has really, um, for the state purposes, dropped the rate down. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we have a policy on supplemental benefits that the state doesn't give. Does the city have a policy on that? Hmm. I mean, does the city have, how, how do we measure the ability to pay above and beyond how the state measures it? The state measured it on the income and the current taxes. And so I don't know what the city does for people who are, say, the state didn't give them enough. Uh -huh. And 
I guess the way I would answer that is that the statute is wide open. It simply says for people who don't have the ability to pay. And, and so it's always the judgment of the Board of Abatement whether we think the person has the ability to pay. And what we've heard from you is that you're going without some basic necessities like, like hot water. Like food. Yeah. I'm going without food. Uh, well, I'm okay in the summertime, but I'm not, I haven't been okay in the wintertime. Uh -huh. And you're also in a situation where your income hasn't changed. I mean, no. Well, my income has, you mean for 2023? Well, I mean, you're not working where your, your uh, salary might fluctuate. It might go no, up no, I'm not working. Right. But you got a cost of living adjustment on your social security. That's different every year. But yeah. Yeah, and and I I have medical bills that that I really have to. I've been disabled since 1993, and so I have medical bills that I have to pay. So anyway, Carrie. So uh, just a procedural question: Are we uh, able to abate for the whole tax year, or only for from now and into the past? I think we can abate the whole tax year. Okay. So then I'm, I want to make a motion that we abate one thousand one hundred twenty-eight dollars and eighty-four cents. And is that the four times the? That's four times okay. the, the difference. The motion was already. Right. And Kim made the motion, but oh, it's, sorry. Good, it's good to have the math. <laughs> okay. Um, I just want to clarify that that's the inverse of what was being. You said you had the ability to pay three hundred and forty dollars per quarter. Well, that's that's what I've, I've I I wanted to show you that I'm trying to pay. Yeah. And so, but so not necessarily. That, no, but I I I interpreted that as she was able to pay that one time. One time. But she's okay. not got to, committed to paying it the whole time. So, so. you were just saying you were just clarifying that it's the difference between last year and this year. That's what you, okay. What was that amount again? $1,128.84. Really? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Well, the last, if you, if you look at the last paragraph on this little sheet right here, the last paragraph, mm -hmm. I didn't use a 340. Oh, 1,194. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Yeah, Charlotte. Well, so, what were you asking to obey? Is not only municipal but also education tax. I can't hear you. There, yeah, I think that is in both. Can you repeat it? What the you question said? is: Are you asking to abate both the education tax and this town tax? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> that's sorry. a fine point. That, but well, it, I'm just looking at municipal net tax and education tax. Mm -hmm. On the tax bill, you can see. See, so I just well, to... because then the city's still going to be on the hook for the ed tax, whatever. Right. Yes. But is. if but if we abate that all from the city tax, then we don't have to pay the school fund but, anything. But, well, but we... it's over. It's over. What the? It's she got so much state payment on it. Do you see it under the municipal part? So it's nine fifty eight sixty two. Is it municipal? Is there municipal one four eight two ninety? On the 2023-24, the net I'm municipal tax. Yeah. So that's okay. under. So we're okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at the wrong So the so the motion yeah. is to abate 1194-28 of the municipal tax. So can I ask? 1480 Uh huh. Okay. So if I pay, am I going to be responsible for paying? Three twenty-three point six four. Yeah, same as last year. Well, no, that was that oh. was this year. Last year was lower than that. No, last oh, year. Oh no, last that's year was what it was. Three sixty-four. Yeah, yeah. Same as last year is what the proposal. Because I really didn't know if it was would go higher after I do the homestead. Sure. You know what I'm saying? That's why I paid the three forty. Mm -hmm. Discussing this. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm still stuck on the state has a program that bases both the education and municipal tax on someone's income. 
we are going to say that we want another, we, the particular uh, taxpayer is a situation where they say they can't pay. We want to abate the municipal tax because of what criteria do we have? Do we know what percentage of income we'd be looking at? Do we know how much someone's supposed to pay out of 27,000 income? I think it becomes pretty arbitrary in our part. It sort of sounds like it's a little bit irrelevant because she's telling us, she's, she's requesting based on her inability to pay. Yeah. And she's saying she's able to pay what she could pay last year, but she can't pay more than that. Right. And we're, we're saying that the state formula doesn't measure everybody's ability to pay by when you show your income. They don't look at your medical bills. They don't look at all that. And then we should build something into the municipal system to do that. I mean, that's what we're doing here. I mean, well, we have, we're using you know, the we have a standard plus uh, capacity to do what we think is right. Right. <laughs> and what criteria do we use? Carrie. Um, yeah, I, the, I think this is a good question. Um, and we have to take them all on a case-by-case -case basis. So the state does whatever the state does. I think there's a huge problem with the timing of the state's decisions. But what's before us right now is we have someone who's come to us saying, I could afford to pay what I paid last year, and I can't afford to pay more. And she's brought us evidence of her income. She's brought us evidence of medical bills. She's, she's backed it up sufficiently for me to say, OK, I believe you. And so um, I think that, for me, that satisfies the criteria of ability to pay. And there is no definition in the statute of what that means. We just have to kind of well, say, do we believe her or not? There's other questions. Some people may have the same tax bill have mortgage. Some people may not have a mortgage. We're, we're right. getting into an area where we don't really judge the ability to pay. We're just saying we'll abate taxes. John? I think the, the thing is that somebody with a mortgage or without a mortgage is going to be in a completely unique situation. They may have the ability to pay, even if they have two or so Someone with a mortgage and this income may have less of the may not. Right. But that's, I don't know. But that's where we have to make our individual that's the question. Do you still have a mortgage on your property? Well, I have a mortgage with the city. I I had to replace my my furnace. So in, you got a loan from the revolving loan fund. Got it. So I have twelve thousand dollars that I owe, but there's no interest on it. And there's no payment. It'll come to no. You there's when no you sell payment. Your house. Yep. When I sell my house, or when my heirs sell my house, it'll come out of that. Yep. So that's the mortgage I have. My 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 heirs are cognizant of they are they're knowledgeable about that twelve thousand dollars. In fact, I think the city has the title for the has the title for my house until that's paid off. So yeah, so that's not like a mortgage where you pay every month, but it's a, it's a lien on the property. Yeah. I'm very fortunate that um, my mortgage has been paid off for a few years. But after Irene, oh my goodness, I hate I, I hate sounding like I'm just like, woe is me. But after Irene. I had to submit an insurance claim because, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm losing it here. I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, the storm door on a deck they put in, and they put the deck in by code at the time, but the deck had been put in in 97, 96, 97, and so Irene happened in 2011, so it was many years afterwards, and now the code is different with the deck, and so anyway, what was the question? Okay. I think I think there wasn't really a question. Uh, I, I think John's right. We it's 
It's vested in the judgment and discretion of the board of abatement. Each of us gets to make our own decision about whether we think that this is an appropriate case where the, that we've been satisfied by the taxpayer that uh, she can't, that lacks the ability to pay. And next year will be different. And next year, it and be next year any taxpayer has the ability to file another request for abatement. But we're just dealing with this request now. I have my fingers crossed that next year will be different. Yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. No. I'm hoping. Well, it will be different because taxes are going up. I mean, it's inevitable coming out of the process we're in. So it would make sense to not plan on it being better. Well, it's <laughs> not plan on what? The taxes going down or the situation being better. It's, the but costs are going up dramatically. Next year will be based on the current assessment. Okay. That will be based on next year's assessment. Which is reflected in the not the, not the current list. assessment we have. It will be based on the new assessment next year. No, it'll be based on what's on there now. Well, that's the current. Bill. That's what he's the saying. It's the current assessment. Yeah. Next so year's it's, it's going to be based on uh, those assessments. Don't change unless there's some. Well, this is this state payment's based on the, the three July first, twenty three assessment. Right. But there's, no. There's been another. Oh, twenty three. Yes. Yes. Okay, or because April the new first. grand list and has been filed, so there's a new value. Well, that's not going to change her value. Yes, it should change the results of the income. Guys, anyway. we're talking about something that could come up next year. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to vote. Okay, is everyone else ready to vote? Yeah, All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So we need to do a roll call. Yeah, people should have introduced themselves anyway. Oh, right. So we'll do a roll call. Uh, Kim. Aye. Charlotte. Aye. Tim. No. Carrie. Aye. Rosie. Aye. Bob. No. John. I'm staying. Marty. Aye. And on the, on the Zoom machine, we, let's have you introduce yourselves and say, Sal. Jude? Jude Newman, uh, I. Sorry, could you try that again? Yes. Okay, and that would be Jude Newman. And uh, Donna? Uh, Donna Bates, I. Please remind people to speak up around the table. It's very hard to hear people. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So I haven't been keeping a track count. Oh, that's, that passes. Okay. Thank you for coming in, and your abatement's been granted. You'll get a notice from the clerk. Okay. Yes. Oh, and um, she did ask that everybody's copies of her material that she submitted be turned back in, mm -hmm. and so that can be shredded. Sure. Yeah, it's fine with me. I need to get that information on Okay, next up, we Thank have, you. thanks for coming in. Thank you, everybody. Hi. I'll come up and switch with you. Okay. I did a good job. Why? You did a very good job. Did I do a very good job? Nope. You did a very good job. Okay, we have two separate appeals for. Bashara Capital Theater LLC. And so we should take them separately. The first one is 148.093000. And would you introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Lily King. I'm here on behalf of Fred and Mary Bashara. And would you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury, that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Great, thank you. And we've developed them. Give me your name again. Lily Kane. 
K A N G? Nope, C A I N. Okay. And we have a set of questions, but why don't you first just tell us who, who you are and what what's your role? Um, my, I'm Lily Kane, C A I N. I live in Montpelier. I'm part of the Bashara family. We own the Capitol Movie Theater. 95 State Street is the building next door. And then the Yellow House is the one that'll be afterwards, 97 State Street. And so this is, uh, this is the Capitol Theater building. <coughs> yes. And I think the information you filed was, was really quite clear. I'm going to go through a list of questions. And you know, John said it's going to be mechanical. People, and we're, do, we're doing this so we can get the right information in every, and the same inter information from everybody. And uh, members have the ability to ask other questions, too. But was there a 50% or greater loss in value to the primary structure? Yes. And was there a total lo loss, total loss of use of the property? Was there, was there a loss of use for 60 days or longer? Yes. And I noticed uh, when this was filed, it wasn't clear when the theater was going to be reopened. Correct. We actually opened the movie theater on November 17th. Okay, good. Um, was there a loss of access to utilities for the primary structure for 60 days or more? The building that we're talking about is the big movie theater that's 93 State Street, and then what used to be the Community National Bank that's part of the same tax bill, that's 95 State Street. We'll have to fix the agenda afterwards. So in 95 State Street, which is the rental property, there was no electricity for the 60 days. In the movie theater, we did have electricity um, and water. What we didn't have was phone and internet for more than 60 days. They're utilities, but they're not the primary utilities. OK. We're only talking about the theater. This no, the, the theater is, so in the agenda, it was typed wrong. The first one we're doing right now, the tax bill that we're talking about is 9395 is on the same tax bill. Oh, okay. The second hearing we're going to do next is 97 State Street, and that's the yellow building, the yellow building next door. Got it. The property record cards will have the, the, the correct addresses on there. Um, was there condemnation of the primary structure under federal, state, or municipal law? No. It was posted that only approved contractors could be on site and owners, but it wasn't connected. Okay. The next question, is it damage to land only? We know the answer to that. The answer is it's not just damage to land only. Or Correct. 100% of the main building mm -hmm. and, a little, and the private sidewalk. So in front of the theater, if you recall, it's the pretty brickwork that we put out there. We had to replace and repair some of those books as well. And has there been income loss? <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> uh, was from July 10 through November 16th, anywhere in previous years of $164,000 in lost rent revenue up to $215,000. And. Do you have the structure's total square footage and the estimated square footage of the damaged areas? So it's 100% of the damage of the building. The, I don't know the square footage of either property 93 or 95. What I did is I took that it says the lot is 0.43 acres. And really, the only bit of land that isn't the building is the sidewalk underneath the awning, that stretch there. So if you take 0.43 acres, that's 18,730 square feet. I'm going to guess the building's about 99%. And, and the private sidewalk would be 1%. And thinking about the building, the theater part of the building, 100% of the square footage. Uh, the bank side of the building, uh, are there, is it just one story? It's, just, it's the first floor in the basement. Okay, so again, the bank side of the building was 100%? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any other questions? I'm sorry, there's no second floor? 
in the, in the theater? No. I mean, there used to be a balcony. I'm just looking at the picture of it, and it looks like there's a second floor, so that's well, the projection room. The, the old projection rooms, and I guess, yeah, you could, the projection rooms are up on the second level, which is what used to be a balcony. Okay. But they were effectively not accessible because of all those. Correct. Um, you said there was a 50% or greater loss to the property, meaning the damage was more than 50% of the valuation? Yeah, that's how, yeah, so the valuation was just over a million dollars, and we were looking at, um, we were estimating $1.2 million of damages. I think, hopefully, we're going to end up being just below the million dollar mark, so that's a good thing. Awfully, awfully close to 100%. Pretty, pretty close to 100 percent of the value of the building. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was worse than in '92. Yeah. Yeah. Does anyone else have any other questions? Keeping in mind we're not we're not voting on this tonight. But, I understand. So we'll move to the next property, and that is parcel number 148.097000. And that is 97 State Street. And this is office building. Correct. And I will ask you the same questions. Okay. Was there a 50% or greater loss in value to the primary structure? Yes. Was there a loss of use of the property for six? by the property owner for 60 days or more? Yes. Was there a loss of access to utilities for 60 days or more? Um, there was no heat. There was partial electricity. Um, we ended up switching from the furnace. I think it was Conti Oil. I get it mixed up, but I'm not sure. But I think it was Conti Oil in the basement. And we switched that to efficient heat pumps. Was there a condemnation of the primary structure? No. Again, just posted that only contractors and owners could go in. Is the damage to land only, to an outbuilding only, or to both only? Both. But but not outbuildings. The, the primary have, building we're Yeah, the about. primary building. Yeah. We don't have an outbuilding. <laughs> Was there income loss? Yes. The tenant on the first floor, left hand side, moved out immediately after the flood. Um, so it's been July till now um, that we've had no tenant. The upstairs tenant, although their property wasn't flooded because they were affected by the no heat and the electricity and everything else, um, they're asking for reductions in their rents as well. And I'm not sure how long they're going to stay. So they've paid their rent, but they, uh, they're trying to get a uh, refund of some of that. Right. The, the construction took a lot longer than we anticipated in that building, and it was noisy. And when you're putting in heat pumps, uh, you know, they're cutting into the ceilings, even in their office, in their office space. And so he was disrupted, and we understand that. And again, I, I think this last question we could probably get from the property card, the structure's total square footage, and the estimated square footage to the damage areas. 2873. Um, pretty good. I said 2400. That, was, that wasn't that far off. The card has you 2873. Yeah. That was close. Uh -huh. <laughs> Counting ceiling tiles. Um, and so the whole 100% of the first floor, the basement was storage. That was all damaged. That had to, everything had to be removed out of there. And then the effect on the second floor again was the no heat and having to replace the entire heating system. Okay. From any members have any questions? Lily, when, when was the first floor ready to, to be rented back out again? Um, Just recently. I think January 1st was pretty close. We're, we're still kind of in there now, kind of going in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rosie. Um, do we want, this is more of a procedural, do we want to ask everybody what the amount of the income loss was? or? Are we just saying was an income loss? Hmm. John, do you have any? We do have to be a little careful, as Bob mentioned, if we get into too many specifics of people's income. Just, just a place to tread lightly. Okay. 
So, but if we ask, was there loss, then that's enough to cover us with the state uh, stuff? I think it is. Great. Okay. Anything else? And anyone on, on the Zoom? Just, yeah, Bob. Just one question. To, which rent was paid for which part of the property? So the, the left that, the left hand side was where we had a tenant. Is that upstairs? No, up, upstairs was the one that they continued paying rent. Yeah. They continued paying rent. The left hand side moved out right away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, the right hand side was. Bacon. The right-hand side was vacant ahead of time. We actually had just moved over our offices and got flooded out of everything. <laughs> so even if you impute some rent payment from your business to this, to the property, it wasn't rentable or usable during that time? It was not rentable or usable. Yeah. It just barely is right now. Yep. And are you requesting both quarters? Yeah. Because you said January 1st. Yes. Okay. I don't, I think we are set unless anyone else wants to stop me from adjourning us. We got one. Yeah. Oh, we do. What? Oh, I didn't, uh, Paul. I didn't, I saw Paul on the, okay. I just, uh, oh, there, there was an adjustment to this, and maybe that not everybody got I still have one more to go. I was wondering what, why Paul was here. Well, okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Lily. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. I appreciate all of your consideration in this. Okay. Sorry, Paul. I was wondering why you were here because you weren't on my list here. So, just a second. Yeah. This was going to come back to us. In a month or so. And what kind of record are we going to make? Is there going to be a transcript? Um, John's taking notes and everything. So Just we'll get a summary. Yeah, we'll get a summary. So we each don't have one of these. Oh, one of these? No. No. So you're, you have a sheet for each one. You're taking notes. Yes. Okay. That's so. Tim. So just to clarify, when you said a month or so, I think when we approve the procedures, it says within 30 days. So we really need to have this result within a month, right? Okay. <clears throat> February 8th is our Which, last looking, looking at the schedule, that seemed realistic, so... I think it's realistic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There will need to be, because we have more trickle in, there will need to be one additional meeting afterwards. These are all considered one meeting before, as we did before. But we will need to warrant for a separate, just one off meeting afterwards. But I think anybody else who comes in, because the trickle could go on forever, I'm just going to steer them to the annual... Uh, board of debate meeting that we're required to have under the charter in the first week in June, I think. So we can mark your calendars for the first week of June because we'll have some more. <laughs> but that's that's way that's far away. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but just so you all know, that's that's the thinking. Right now. Okay, so the third or the last one is Paul LaFowl. Um, hey, Paul. And we are. This is this is actually we make Sarah he'll help us with this one if you feel comfortable. Parcel number. This is a water and sewer. Okay, this is parcel number one thirty one to one thirty three Elm Street. Parcel number zero four three one three one zero zero zero. And. I think many of us may not have the uh, have your filing with us, Paul. So why don't you tell us what? Sorry, do you have it? Have it? My my original uh, hope. Okay, hold on a second, folks. gets a copy of what you filed and why don't you tell us what the basis of your request is. 
Okay. Well, my original request was for uh, abatement of water and sewer payment, um, but I'm, I'm, I would also like to be considered for tax abatement as well. Um, essentially, during the flood, uh, I had four hot water heaters in the basement, and they all got floated up and tossed around and the inlet pipes broke off. And so there was water pouring into the basement aside from just the flood. And um, this all came up my attention because I got the wa a water bill, which usually is in the range of water and sewer in the range of three, four hundred dollars combined. And this one was like, $2,258. So I'm sure it was because the hot water heaters were broken off the inlet pipes and there was water just pouring out. Um, when I real, I went down, I, tr I wanted to go in the basement and turn it off, but of course the basement was totally full of water. So I called the city and they sent some folks up from DPW and um, they they were hoping to turn it off at the street, but they weren't able to because this, I guess, the sidewalk was put over the shutoff valves. So they had to come back the next day with a backhoe, and they had to chop the whole thing up and dig down. And you know, they were finally able to turn it off. But meanwhile, the water was just gushing out of the pipes for you know, a couple of days or more. Um, so that was, I was hoping to get uh, an abatement for that that particular bill. Um, I also was looking at the criteria for um, tax abatement, and I'm thinking that at least some of them I would be uh, eligible for. Yeah, thanks, Paul. I think what we should do with the tax abatement is have you file a request with, you know, the way the other people have done, and we will take it up, but we don't have that information in front of us now. Okay? Okay. Um, I, I, did, I did send the information I just gave you. I sent in an email to Serena Baker, and um, she told me that that email would suffice as an application or as uh, in lieu of filling out the form that you have. That's for water and sewer. That's for water. For the water. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Now, Sarah, do you know something about this? John, the clerk thinks you know something about this that is relevant. <laughs> I don't. I just. Yeah, I don't think we got really any kind of supporting information. The, the form is not required. It's something that we point folks to, but really any kind of written notice, written request is enough to, to trigger a hearing. So not everybody filled out. So. so it's in the email from... Serene. Uh, December 13th. There's an email chain anyway about this. Okay. Thanks, Mark. And, and it, am I right that there are other people in the room who don't have this in front of them? Okay. Yeah. Well, you can a copy. There's a, on, on the next page, there's kind of a joke down. So, Jack, if we've got Paul on and we don't have to have a written application, can we at least ask the five questions and be efficient about this? <laughs> I'm, that, I'm happy to do that. Okay, so, Paul, you heard what uh, the, the questions I asked the other taxpayers, so I'm going to go 
go through them and ask you the same question with regard to the, uh, the taxes. Can you hear me okay? Okay, and I'm going to really ask you to speak up because uh, you're trying to get a lot of people to hear you. Okay? So, um, John, can you hold off on that until just, I think, maintaining silence in the room is important. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just uh, getting a copy of it. For yep. Okay. Uh, with, and we're, again, we're talking about 131, 133 Elm Street. Was there a fifth? Is that right, Paul? Uh, that, that address is correct. Uh, the question of 50% or greater loss of value, is that what you're asking me now? Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that it, if I were to actually just before the flood, I was considering putting the house on the place on the market. And um, it was brought to my attention that if I were to set, were to sell it right after the flood, that I would probably not get 50% of what I would ordinarily have gotten. So I'm not sure how to, how to evaluate that question other than that. Okay. Cost, cost of repairs, maybe? Uh-huh. No. Um, there is a question about cost of repairs. Let's see. Um, do, do you have enough, any information about the cost of repairs? Um, I do have... I do have information. I, I'm in the process of repairing it now, and I can... Um, you know, I can only guess what it's going to end up being. You know, I don't know for sure at this point. But the repairs are not going to, I mean, the repairs wouldn't come to 50%. Okay. But if I were to try to sell it, I can't imagine that I would have gotten 50% of the value. Okay. Was there a loss of use of the property for more than for 60 days or more? Yeah, it, it's still not being used the way it was. There were there, it's a duplex, and there on one half there are apartments, three apartments, three three stories, three apartments, and on the other half there are offices. And uh, currently, it's totally the building is empty, except for one brave apartment dweller who is still there. And aside from the, aside from the building being empty, could it be uh, inhabited? Uh, and it, it, could any of the floors be uh, inhabited at this point? Uh, well, again, there's one person living there, but it's just be beginning to beginning to be habitable in, in so far as everyone needs to come in through the front entrance and it was all torn apart. Both, both sides were torn apart. The um, steps to the front porch were torn off by the flood, ended up down the street, and we've, we've since brought it back and reattached it. But there's still quite a bit of debris on the uh, in the entrance way where you in the front entrance way of the building, so it's it's difficult. It would be difficult to to access any of the uh, spaces. So, I mean, I suppose if someone were willing to put up with that, but here it is now. What like six months out from and. It's still not back together again. Okay, thanks. Um, was there a loss of access to utilities for 60 days or more? Uh, we had electricity out not for not for 60 days. But the heat heat has been out for it's back on now, but it was certainly off for 60 or more days. Okay. 
and hot water as well. And was the property condemned? No. Uh, has there been income loss? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I haven't been able to haven't been able to rent the spaces out since the flood. Were they rented? Were was it fully occupied before the flood? Um, pretty much. I think there's one office that was uh, vacant, but by and large, it was uh, nearly full. Okay. And we we have the information about the square footage. Would you say that the damage was to the first floor and basement and not to the second and third floors? Okay. We can compute that information based on that. And about 240 square feet. All right. 2,400, excuse me. Any other questions from members of the board? Okay. Um, I guess Go what, ahead, what attempts did you, I don't know, I want to be fair and ask everybody the same question, but what, what attempts have you made? It sounds like it's still not rentable for the most part, but what attempts have you made to, to make it rentable? I'm sorry, it's still not rentable? Is that what you said? What attempts have you made to make it rentable, to do the repairs? Oh, we've been working on it ever since the flood. I mean, I've, I've hired Vermont Construction Company from Colchester, and they've been working on it you know, since then. Okay. Any other questions from members of the board? Sal. Sal. So. Uh, Paul, is the current, is the current tenant uh, paying rent the full amount? Well, she, uh, I forgave her rent for several months, but she's back to paying as of last month, she's back to paying full rent. Last month being December, she paid full rent? Um, December, that's, yes. Yes. And, and January. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And any other board members have questions? Donna, Judy, else you put your hands up. Thank you, Jack. Okay, Tim. Paul, quick question for you. Do you have to move up any utilities out of the basement, like your heating system yeah. or electrical or? Yeah, uh, all of that. Yeah, we had to move. Uh, we had to change from oil furnace in the basement to uh propane boiler up in the on the first floor so we and um, move the uh, electrical panel up to the first floor as well wow so have you lost living space to make a new mechanical room so, so you've got less room uh, a little bit of a little bit of office space to do that um, Chuck Cassisio, who's a magician with Heating systems manage to squeeze it in. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, Paul, if you've got what I said at the beginning in, in your mind, we will go over this along with all the other flood damage requests at the end of this process. And, and thanks for being here. Should we take the water one separately? I think we can take the water one now, yeah. Okay. Um, so what was the total amount that was being requested for the water one? Like 1900 I don't think I put a value on it. I just, I mean, I thought it would be certainly reasonable for me to pay what I usually pay um, if that people were willing to do that and to... to um, Forgive the difference. Okay, and we have, he submitted to us 
some water and sewer bills from uh, historical water and sewer bills. Does anybody calculated what the average previously was? Yeah, so it was Serena's thing, if you look at her calculations, what the city would do with two and a half would be the 913.62. Okay. But I think he's asking for the whole thing. Hmm. And, and yeah, I'm looking at this table and I'm not understanding it. Could you, do you see the next page? She's got two and a half of the, the number of gallons. Where is the two and a half coming from? That's the city's, um, if you have a oh, the process. Oh, that okay. That you're eligible for two and a half. Gotcha. Uh, Jack, uh, Donna, can yes. I ask a question of order? Yes. There seems to be a person giving information that's not at a speaker. I don't know if she's staff, but could could anyone who's giving information at least come to the table and be close to a speaker? Oh, that that was Charlotte Hoyt. She's a member okay. of the board. That's great. Then uh, she's at the table, but then get next to a mic because we really couldn't hear her. Okay, could you, thanks, Donna. That's a very that's a great point. So looking at this looking at this table, the the 225892 that was the bill that you got uh, yeah after the flood after the flood and then and the 91362 is what is the adjustment that's being proposed and you're you're asking for a further reduction to your historical payment uh yes that's true and and how much uh how much time does that well it almost doesn't matter how much time does that cover. It was really a couple of days, less than a week or something. This the, the water bill or the, the broken pipes. Yeah, we're we talking about one month. One month's payment. Uh, oh, the, you mean the the two twenty two hundred? Is that? I'm not clear on what's there. I'm sorry. Well, the, the, the water was leaking for a short period of time after the flood, maybe a few days or a week. Right. Yeah, a few days. So this huge bill was accumulated within a few days. So you're, right. asking, you're asking for an abatement of this one month's bill to your historical, right. your historical rate. Okay. Thank you. Right. I, yeah, I don't know either. I, is it the twenty two fifty eight minus nine hundred? No. No. What, the nine fifteen is just what the city was on people that have leaks. Yeah. The city uh, that, but he wanted more than that, so he came to the board. Yeah, this was seemed like more. <laughs> basically asked, I believe, for the that total amount less is typical quarterly payment, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's what I was, 2258 yeah. minus the 912, it's 1346, does that sound right? I, no, it's, he's at, that, the city was, um, the two and a half times was a $913 is what they would normally get. But he didn't feel that was enough. He wants to have whatever his request was. And Donna, are you hearing that? Yeah, so in case people don't understand, uh, when there is an issue like this that comes up, there is, a, I guess, a one time uh, where the city will, I don't remember exactly what the number was, Charlotte, Charlotte said, will we'll give you a break of a certain amount. I think it's two and a half times the normal average bill. So that offer was made, uh, but it was not sufficient to the taxpayer. So the taxpayer came to ask for you know, above and beyond that, and they could get from the city. 
if I had been using it, using extra water, I would understand that. But this right. was really beyond my control, and uh, uh, I walked through the proper channels, and they weren't able to shut it off for me. So I'm kind of stuck with it. Donna, you have a, your hand raised. And well, so. do, uh, I wanted to get some more information dealing with how long was that the same period then that the, the street the city workers are out there tearing up the sidewalk to find the valve to turn it off right so, so was that within 24 hours of you reporting it uh, i believe it was well they came out at first and they tried to dig it out just with shovels but they realized they weren't going to be able to get it so they had to go back the next day get a backhoe and come and actually tear the sidewalk up and then dig down with the backhoe to get the turn off shut off valve okay so this was more than just quote your leak but then we had our, the city had our own issues in trying to turn yeah. it off so it lasted longer okay thank you yeah so the 913 62 is two and a half times what your average bill is for that particular period, which I calculate to be 365.45. Does that sound about right? It's about right. Okay, so we can back into that. If we divide 913.62 by 2.5, that gets you what figure, Sal? Uh, well, I, I erased it, but I'll do it again. <laughs> I wrote it down. You said 365.45. Three, 365.45, yeah. Okay. And so our, I think the uh, request from the taxpayer is 2258.92 minus that 365.45. So it's 189.344. Okay. Eighteen ninety three forty four. Uh huh. Does someone want to make that motion? To just for discussion to say it, it because there is a standard for the city. It's kind of a reason for that. This happens in many different ways to property owners throughout the year. It can be running sinks. It can be a bypass thing. We had it happen. The city has generously done the 2.5 percent, so it's not a unique situation. Um, and, and I do think consistency is is part of fairness too. Mm -hmm. so. Tim, I'm curious. I, it sounds to me like the the volume was higher than average because of all four hot water meters. Just being thrown away. Sure. Yeah, we had it happen on our properties too. That, yeah, it yeah. happened all over town. All right, so the chair would accept, would entertain a motion for some, something. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do we have a calculation, an exact calculation of what the normal water uses, water and sewer uses compared to what these extra bills were at the Till the time that it was the leak was stopped. I, thought that's what I think that's the last page. Well, I don't know if we figured it out. I'm willing to make a motion. Okay, Donna. I, maybe I didn't un understand everything, but I feel this is a difference of what Tim was talking about when we, the city, showed up and didn't get it turned off within 24 hours. So I would propose that we reduce his bill back to the Three hundred and sixty-five dollars and forty-five cents. Which is is that the eighteen ninety-three forty-four? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay, that has been moved. Is there a second? Second. Now, one of the things that's complicating about this is that uh, the, I think the way he described it, the situation to us. He didn't even realize that this was a problem until he got his next water bill. So, is, 
so the water was flowing into the basement of this building way after. No, I don't. I no, don't it was within a couple days. Is that am I right, Paul, or not? Within several days, it was shut off. Oh, okay. Okay. So, okay. So, discussion on the motion of uh, that that we've heard from Rosie. The the or abated Don, amount. Sorry. The abated amount is eighteen ninety three forty seven. We want to be technical about. It. Okay. Are we going to vote on the motion? We're, I'm waiting. We're still having discussion. So, uh, and Kim's about to say something. Well, I'm a little, uh, the, the city would normally give a 900 some odd um, credit, yep. Credit. And this is almost twice that. And the reason is because the water was, was running out undetected for some time and couldn't be fixed right away by the city. I think that's the argument. Yeah. yeah. And the reason it was undetected was because there was so much other water due to the flood. That you, you couldn't even get into the basements, as I understood it. So it wasn't negligence on his part. So you're saying it doesn't meet the normal standard that the city uses? It's over and above the standard? That's what I'm understanding. And so is there just cause? <coughs> and it seems to me there is. This was a pretty unique situation. There was the meter was spinning and nobody knew it and nobody could stop it for some period of time. I think mean, those are extraordinary circumstances. Do we have enough to, have we heard enough to vote? Yes. If so, Bob, you don't think you're ready yet? What, what is the exact number? 1893.47. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. You'll get a notice from the clerk, Paul, telling you that the abatement's been granted in that amount. Just the water bill. On the water bill. Thanks, Paul. You're welcome. Thanks. So at this point, I think uh, we can, we're adjourning this time, right, Paul? Right, we're going to recess. Okay. At this point, we are going to recess at uh, 7.55 p.m.